Hi, I'm Lionel Clark with Destiny's Point Church. Thank you very much for joining us today and checking us out. For more information, check us out on destinypoint.com. Or join us in person on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. But as it is written, I hasn't seen, nor ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Isn't that powerful? Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. You haven't even imagined yet. You haven't even thought of the things that God has prepared for them that love him. He hasn't even entered your heart yet today. I want to start a brand new series this morning. And this has been in my heart for a couple of weeks. I want to talk to you about dreaming big. Everybody just look at your neighbor and just say, it's time to dream big. It's time to dream big. Look at your other neighbor because they're a little quiet. And say, it's time to dream big. Our series is about dreaming big. It's about dreaming bigger. It's about reminding yourself of who you are and who you belong to. Amen? It's about reminding yourself about what God can do. It's rekindling the dream and the vision and the passion that's in our hearts and in our life. I truly believe that God desires, I want you to get a hold of this today. I truly believe that God desires to take somebody's heart, somebody's life, somebody's faith, somebody's situation, somebody's dream to a whole nother level. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered your heart the things that God is preparing for you. There may be someone in this room today that has felt that you have lost your dream. Or maybe your dream ha has become cluttered. Or, or maybe you feel like it has slipped out of your hand. I come to tell you that our God is a restorer of all things. And he's about to restore the dream in your heart again. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, we ask you for the next three hours that you would just bless us in your word and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Everybody say dream big. You could be seated. This morning, I want to start out and just say that small things have the potential to be powerful, right? Small things, certain small things, have the potential to be powerful. I heard someone say one time, playing sports, they, there was someone that said to an individual, you are way too small to play this sport. And they said, you better watch it because dynamite comes in. Small packages. <laughs> Did you know that a mosquito is the most deadly animal and insect in the world today? We know that they carry disease and can, but just think about a mosquito. A small thing. Do you know certain ants can lift 50 times greater their body weight? And they can cut through objects and material that should be impossible. A small thing that is powerful. The tongue, they say, is the strongest muscle in the body. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, man, you've been talking too much. Go ahead and just tell them. <laughs> Think about a microchip, how small and how slim that it can be, but yet how small and slim that it is, it can contain great amounts of information. It, it even can contain information on a small chip that will change and can change lives and cities and even nations. On a small chip. Jesus said, be careful of the small foxes that spoil the vine. He 
Sometimes we are aware and, and careful of big things that try to attack us, but you got to be careful of the small things, he says. He also says in the word that we are not to despise small beginnings. Though it may start out small, it doesn't mean that it's going to end up small. Even a small mustard seed, a mustard seed can move mountains, a faith like mustard seed. Amen? Small things can have power. A, a young man came to Jesus. There were thousands of people on the hillside. They were hungry. He said, all I have is two fish and five pieces of bread. He went to Long John Silver's that afternoon. He had two fish and five loaves of bread. And Jesus took the small lunch and he blessed it and he multiplied it and fed thousands because something small in his hands can become great. Amen? A lady in the Bible gave two mites, which would have been worth less than half a penny. And she gave from her heart, and there was a man across the aisle giving an abundance, not giving from his heart. And Jesus said, this woman has given more because it come from the heart. It was a small thing that was really a great thing. God uses small things to work out his purposes and his plan. But I want to tell you today that this message isn't about small things. <laughs> I set you up. You, you were thinking we were going that way. Though he can move and, and use small things to become great things, the message today is not about small things. When it comes to faith and when it comes to dreaming and it comes to uh, uh, an imagination, when it comes to vision, when it comes to dreaming about God things in your life, he never intended for you to think in a small way or to dream in a small way or to imagine in a small way God wants you to think and dream big because he is big amen I want to tell you that our God is an extravagant God he is an, an extravagant God in his thinking and in his plans he is an extravagant God God does not think in this way he doesn't think in barely enough or or barely skimming by and scraping by and he doesn't think in these ways he is a creator and he thinks big he formed worlds and they say that there are worlds and galaxies that continue to form because what God creates is often eternal amen and keeps creating he formed galaxies he took dust from the earth and created a man out of of it. I like to imagine the Bible says that Satan was an archangel and that he was in heaven. He was very prideful. And the Bible says in two different places that God kicked him out of heaven and he fell to the earth like lightning. I, I, in my imagination, I, I just picture that Satan falls to the earth and he impacts the earth and he thinks this is going to be my place. When he made an impact, this is just the way I think sometimes, he makes impact in the earth and dust floats from his impact and God takes that dust and creates a man and breathes life into him and says this man is going to rule the earth and, he, and the Satan is under his feet. Come on somebody, because our God is extravagant. <laughs> That was all just for free. That was just my own imagination. But God created man out of dust. Amen. He formed things that forms things. He, he created us to create. In an apple, there is seed to create more trees, apple trees in us. Because God is an extravagant God. He is excessive. He is grandiose. He is beyond. He is mind-blowing. Listen, he is a dreamer. He is a big thinker. And he wants you to think and dream big. Oh, small things have purpose. And they can produce power. But I want to tell someone this morning when it comes to you and it comes to your life and it comes to the plans that God has for you in your life he never intended for you to be small he never intended for you to barely have enough he never intended for you to just get by and barely make it and with a little blessing no God wants to bless your life and use you in extravagant ways come on somebody 
Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. Amen? Plans and thoughts to, to give you uh, an expected hope. Uh, I, I, I've created you to have a uh, destiny and purpose. When he brought his people out of Egypt, he said, I'm going to bring you into a land. He didn't say, I'm going to bring you out of bondage and into a land where you're just going to barely make it. No. He said, I'm going to bring you into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. They say when in study that the Canaan, the promised land, that the grapes there were larger than men's heads. I don't know about you, but that is a big grape, and that is a, a place of abundance, because when God takes you out to bring you in, he never intends to do something small. He intends to get you to a place of greatness. Come on, somebody. I hasn't seen nor ear has heard, neither has it even entered your heart the things that God has prepared for for those that love him. I, I believe he's talking uh, 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 about heaven even in this passage. But we even can experience a little bit of heaven on this side of eternity. Amen. He has great plans for us. I come to tell somebody this morning. I'm going to preach real fast. I'm trying. I'm telling you. I, I come to tell you to dream big. I've come to tell somebody this morning to dream again. I come to tell somebody this morning that it's time to get out of the small box of thinking. It's time to get out of the small box of expectation. It's time to break out of the box of, of little dreams. It's time to dream again. It's time to, to, to go all out for God. It's it's time to think big. Amen. God is ready to do great things in you and for you and through you. If anyone in this room believes it, can I hear a good hallelujah out there? Hallelujah. <laughs> Abraham in the Bible, uh, he's minding his, his own business. He's doing his own, doing his thing. He's minding his own business. And God shows up out of nowhere. He begins to speak to Abraham about his destiny, about his purpose, and about the plans that he has for Abraham. Before he was Abraham, he was Abram. God changed his name. God put the ham on it. <laughs> that sound, ham sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Focus, Pastor Josh. Here we go. Abraham, he encounters God, God shows up out of nowhere. I pray that someone in this room will have a out of nowhere testimony. Man, this is good preaching today. I don't, you're a little quiet, but this is good preaching. I said, I pray that you have a out of nowhere experience. That God will just show up out of nowhere and begin to speak to you. He, he came to Abraham who was a pagan worshiper at this time. Who was even somewhat disconnected and, and doing his own thing. And God shows up and says, Abraham, I want you to look into the skies. Do you see all those stars that are in the skies? He said, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bless you and you're going to have so many children. You're going to have a, a family line that is blessed that will outnumber the stars in the sky you got to realize that Abraham is in his 70s at this point when God first showed up and he and his wife had no children they weren't able to have any children. And God shows up and says, you're going to have so many kids that they're going to outnumber the, the, the stars that are in the sky. And watch this. The Bible says that Abraham believed God. In Romans, it said that he staggered not at the promise of God. I pray that someone in this room would have a out of nowhere experience where God speaks to you and God tells you something crazy. How many want a crazy blessing? How many want a crazy dream? How many want God to show up and say he's going to do something in you and for you that just don't even make sense? Come on. God intends to bless your life. God wants your life to be significant. And all he is doing, when, listen, when he comes by and he speaks to you about an extravagant dream, all he is looking for is somebody to agree with him. <laughs> 
Not a why, not a how, not a I don't think so. (laughs) Come on, someone. He is a blesser. And today he doesn't want you to look at your circumstance. He doesn't want you to put your eyes on your situation. He doesn't want you to look at your history and your past. If God speaks something fresh to you, all he needs you to do is agree and say amen and stagger not at the promise of God. Amen. He is a blesser. He has a dream for you. What, what is it that's in your heart? He said that he would grant unto us the desires of our hearts. In the Bible, there's a man by the name of Jabez. Have you ever read that book, The Prayer of Jabez? What is it? Just a couple scriptures? A man out of nowhere, Jabez's prayer, he asked the Lord, he said, Will you enlarge my territory? <laughs> right? And you know what God did? Bless them. Amen. I think about David, who was just a a, a shepherd boy that was overlooked even by his own father. Wasn't even invited into the house when the prophet came. But God knew where it was. God took a shepherd boy that was probably poor and uneducated and overlooked by everybody else and said, That's the one that I want, and I'm going to make him a king. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. It doesn't even matter what you think about yourself. If God puts his hand upon you you can be a shepherd boy in a field one day and then the next day you could be a king sitting on a throne somewhere come on Esther a peasant girl poor queen (laughs) and saved her people because God is an extravagant God did you know that God doesn't need our permission to pick who he picks Go ahead and just look at your neighbor and say, see, I told you. I told you. Go ahead and tell him. Our God is a blesser. Are are you thinking too small? I heard in our men's group a couple weeks ago, by the way, which is doing phenomenal. Thank you, Lionel, for leading our men's group. Aren't we having a time? Man. Tony Evans in the lesson said, are you thinking too small? And it just struck my heart. Struck my heart. Are we thinking too small? Amen. Do we realize that God has more than enough? He's able. Amen. I think about the woman in the Old Testament who had just a little bit of oil to make one more cake for her and her son. There was a famine. And she said, I just got enough to make for me and my son. And we're in this famine. We don't have anything else. And we are probably going to die. The man of God said, you know what? You bake me a cake first and give it to me and watch what God does. The oil never ran out (laughs) because there's always more than enough. There's always more with God. He is a creator, and God is always on the move. He's always got something that he's working on. He's always got a next. Abraham, he said, I will be your exceeding reward. The Bible says that when we give unto the Lord, that he gives back to us. But when he gives back to us, it is given, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. you got to understand understand what he's talking about when Jesus is sharing this how many of you have ever bought a bag of chips and when you opened it like air goes out and there's like four chips in there you're like man I paid $7.99 for this little bag of Doritos and I opened it they tricked me it looked full it looked like the chips were like busting out of the top and out the side it was so tight and you open it you can literally hear like And there's like three chips in there. But Jesus, when he's teaching here, he's in the marketplace and he says to them, when you give to God, he says, he, we will, he will give back to you. And then he's looking in the marketplace and when they would, people would bring their bags and they would fill up uh, uh, for whatever it is that they, they want. They, they, they would, it's not like today, they would take it, their bag and they would fill it up and then they would shake it and then they would press down on it and they would push on it and they would put more in there till it was like running over. And that's the type of God that we serve. He is a God that's pressed down, shaken together and running over blessing God. So when it comes to your dream and your plan and, and the things that you desire of the Lord quit thinking small know that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or think man I gotta hurry I got like two more hours of preaching here 
when it comes to your career, when it comes to your job, I'm talking to somebody. It's time to think big. Amen? It's time to think big. When it comes to your family, when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your ministry, think big. God is able. Amen? That business that you've always wanted to start, dream big. Don't think small. Maybe you desire healing. Maybe you desire to see a loved one come to Christ. Maybe there's a dream in your heart that God has put there, but you just don't know how or you don't know when. I want to tell you, you keep dreaming. You keep thinking big because there's a lot of small things that are powerful, but God never intended for you to think and dream small. He wants you to dream big. Amen. I'm ready to get out of the box of limitation. I'm ready to go. Because listen, this is the key. You've got to remember who is in you. <laughs> You've got to remember who is in you. The Bible says one of my favorite scriptures. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Now what? abides and dwells and lives within us the same spirit that said not today death not today not today I, I conquered death this Jesus the, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now lives in you you realize who you are look at your neighbor and say I'm a bad somebody <laughs> is it alright to have a little fun when you realize who you are and you realize that God lives in you, what can stop you? What can stop you? Amen? It's time to dream big. I want to tell you just three things real fast in the next seven minutes, hopefully. I want to tell you, number one, write this down. You have to see it. You have to see it, right? Everybody say see and I'm not talking about with your natural eyes so much. I'm talking about you got to see through the eyes and the filter of faith. you got to see what God sees. If you can see what God sees, everything else changes. It is storming outside. It is raining. But you know what? If we just got in an airplane and we went a little bit higher and broke through the clouds, guess what? There's the sunshine and blue skies. God sees from a high place. He sits high and he looks low. Oh, it may be storming right now from our perspective, but you got to go up and see what he sees. You may be going through a hard time. You may be going through a difficult time. They, they may have said no to you right now. But I want to tell you, you just elevate to see where God sees because it's a whole nother perspective and a whole nother deal. Because if you see what he sees, the storm means nothing. And man, that wasn't even my notes. That was all free. When you see what God sees, you got to write it down. That's, that, that's part of seeing it. you got to write it down. The, the, the prophet uh, Habakkuk said to write the vision and to run with it. you got to write it down. Successful people write down goals. Amen? They write down goals. My, my father-in-law, he kills me. He's one of a kind. He's a go-getter. You go into his office, he's got pictures of airplanes. He's got pictures. He's got a, a, a big, like, coach bus. I'm like, what are we going to do with a big coach bus? Maybe he's going to take all the church to uh, Six Flags next summer if he ever gets one. He, I, I, he's got pictures that he's painted, that, not he's painted, that he's printed off of the computer. All this stuff. And he's like, I, I've got some goals. And man, a dreamer, thinking big. It's time to do these things. You've got to write it down and you've got to run with it. Listen, you, you've got to see it even in the midst of a setback. Have you ever been in a setback? Have you ever been in that place? Oh, yeah. And if you're not careful, you can lose out on your dream and your vision, your fire for it. You've got to see it even in the midst of a setback. Man, I feel that in my heart. You've got to see it. Delay does not mean denial. Amen? Sometimes God is still working 
on a thing. You got to keep seeing it. You got to see it when nobody else sees it. <laughs> Elijah and his servant were in the midst of a famine. They had been a famine for a few years, and it was a hard place. One day, Elijah, out of nowhere, says, I smell rain. Years have went by, no rain, not even nothing. And he said, I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he was walking somewhere, and he just stopped. I smell rain. And he told his servant, he said, I want you to run to the edge there. And I want you to tell me if you see anything, if you see any clouds. The servant ran, didn't see nothing. Comes running back and says, I don't see nothing. He said, go again. He runs back again. I don't see anything. He, he runs back. I don't see anything, prophet. He said, listen, I, I smell rain. I can sense rain. I can see rain. Man, go back. He kept going back. He, he came back another time, and he said, this time, all I see, I see a, a, a cloud that looks like the size of a man's hand. And Elijah said, you know what? We better get on up out of here because rain is coming. You know what? He took off running, and before he could even get to where he was going, an abundance of rain come. He saw rain when no one else saw rain. I want to ask you, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see the dream? Can you see the passion? Can you see those things. I believe many years ago when they opened up Walt Disney World in Florida. They were there to cut the ribbon and, and to celebrate the opening of Walt Disney World. One of the people said, oh, if Walt could just see this. And one of the staff people said, oh, he did. And that's why we're here today. Did you hear that? He saw this before, when it was just swamps. Amen. Do you see it? Do you see what God, what he has spoken to you or what's in your heart? Can you see it? You're going to have to see it through setback. You're going to have to see it when no one else sees it. Amen. Number two, I got to move quick. Jess, if you wouldn't mind, you can come to the keyboard. Number two, you not only got to see it, but you got to speak it. Everybody say speak it. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Amen? Have you ever been around Debbie Downer? <laughs> Not you, Debbie. <laughs> Let's clarify. You're Debbie Lifter. <laughs> Have you ever been around Debbie Downer? You ever been around Eeyore? <laughs> Remember him? Oh, you know, just everything. You know. You got you to gotta, you gotta speak it. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen? The word of God has creating, creative power. When God created everything, what did he do? He just spoke it into existence. His word. He spoke the word. Did you know that, tr that truth trumps fact? <laughs> The fact may be the doctor said you have this or that, but truth of God's word can trump fact. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the courts say. I don't care what your neighbor says. I don't care what the devil says. I don't even care if it looks like two plus two is four and it's obvious. I want to tell you that truth can trump fact because truth, listen, it is life-giving and life-changing. You get some word on your dream. You get some word on your vision. You get some word on it <laughs> amen <laughs> if you're a guest today you say man that guy yells a lot I feel it in my bones amen I feel it in my heart when we wrap our words with faith things can happen amen you gotta see it you gotta speak it and I'm gonna close number three you gotta seed it you have to seed it. You're going to have, if God gives you a dream, if he gives you a passion, he gives you a vision, and it's a grandiose vision and dream. 
you're going to have to work it. You're going to have to press. You're going to have to push. Works with faith without works is what? Dead. You got to have them both together. You got you got to see it. You got to speak it. And then you got to work it. You got to see it. Amen. You got to work towards it. You have to put action towards your dream and your vision. Watch this. Faith isn't a pill that we take to get faith, but faith is really a muscle that we exercise to get stronger. Woo! Come on, somebody. We want to take the faith pill and be like, woo, I'm full of faith. But faith is really work. Amen? If you understand what I'm saying here, you, you got to put works with your faith. You got to get out there. You got to dream, then get out there and work it. Amen? And then this is my favorite part of the whole message. <laughs> if you seed it, then he will exceed it. Come on, somebody. I'm a, I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, I was cheesy. But if you seed it, he will exceed it. One of my other favorite scriptures in the Bible. We're going to close right here. Look at this. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do what? Exceeding abundantly above all that we what? Speak, right? Ask, speak, or what? Think, see it, dream it according to the power that works in us. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything I ask or think according to the power that is working in us. I want to tell you that if you will seed it, then he is able to exceed it. Amen? You have a dream. You have a vision for your life, for your family, for that career, for that lost loved one, for your health, whatever it may be. Listen, you begin to see it. You begin to speak it. You begin to seed it. And you watch God exceed it. Listen, you, whatever it is, he can take it and he can do something even greater that will blow your mind. Amen. Listen, God doesn't, God doesn't share his glory with anybody. And so when he does a thing, he wants people to know it had to be God. Amen. I, I want a testimony. I, I, I want a church. I want a ministry. I, I, I want my life where people look and say, that's Josh Palmer. Man, only God could have done that. Look what God did. For, it had to be God. I, I don't want anyone to think I can do it in myself. I know that if I see it, he can exceed it. Amen. It's time to dream big. It's time to get fresh vision, fresh passion. I want to tell someone this morning, it's time to dream again. Man, I'm doing good. It's only 11.54. It's time to dream again. It's time to dream again. It's time to dream for your life. It's time to dream for your family. It's time to dream for your ministry. It's time to dream for your career. It's time to dream again for your kids. I also want to tell someone this in closing. This is my last point right here. That the devil may steal your coat, but he cannot steal your dream. And if you understand what I'm saying here. In the Bible, Joseph, God gave him a dream that one day he would be in a place of greatness and his father gave him a coat of many colors his brothers hated him and they took that coat from him and they pushed him into a pit and sold him into slavery he was in, in prison he, he was sold as a slave he, he got that coat and then he was working in Potiphar's house and, and he had a dream in his heart and, and Potiphar's wife lied about him and they put him in prison and they took his coat that he wore as a servant in Potiphar's house and they put him in prison they took his first coat and they took his second coat but there was still a dream that was burning within him they may have stolen his coat but they couldn't take his dream out of him one day he got the greatest coat that there ever was he interpreted the, the Pharaoh's dream and they brought him out of the prison and they put a coat on him he became vice president of all 
of the nation and his dream came to pass. I come to tell you the devil and somebody else or maybe your own past mistakes may try to come and steal your coat. Listen, but it can't steal your dream. You keep pressing. You keep seeing. You keep seeing. You keep speaking. You keep believing. Amen. Come on, somebody. Ha, ha, ha.